Today we're going to talk about the rear foot elevated split squat, sometimes also called Bulgarian split squat. We're going to break down what the movement is, how to do the movement, what it trains, different ways you can adjust it based upon your goals, some common mistakes, and then also variations of the movement. So let's get into it. The Bulgarian, or what should actually be called a rear foot elevated split squat, is this exercise where we set up in a split squat stance, but we actually elevate our rear foot. And what this does is it puts us in this position where we're doing a semi unilateral exercise, loading up this leg more, emphasizing it, and then doing a squatting action. Now we're looking at what does the rear foot elevated split squat work? We can look at the actions that Bruno does. So when he goes down, we're going through knee flexion, so we're gonna be working the quads. He's going into hip flexion, so we're gonna be working the glutes. This rear side is gonna be challenging the quads as he sits back, and he's also gonna get some trunk challenge. This is gonna be a little bit challenge on the hamstrings and adductors, and also some of the side glutes, but it's gonna be very minimal. All right, let's talk about why I like the rear foot elevated split squat. If we check it out, when we're in this position, it's a semi-unilateral exercise. So normally, if we try to do a single leg, completely single leg exercise, like a single leg squat, you have this really challenging balance demand. In contrast, when I'm in the rear foot of the split squat, because I have this rear foot, I can reduce the balance demand and really emphasize loading up my legs and truly challenging them. As well, when I'm in my bottom position, I can change the position of my knee, I can change the position of my hip, and the position of my torso to load different muscles to different levels. So for instance, if I get set up and I want to do a little bit more glutes, I can stay more vertical shin, bend over more, and really load up that butt. In contrast, if I want more quads, I can shift my knee more forward, and I can stay more upright, and really load that quad up to a higher degree. Another advantage is normally when we do bilateral movements, like a squat, it's common for people to experience this pinch in their hips. And an aspect of that is that you can't really adjust your hip position as well. In contrast, when you're in this rear foot of a split squat position, you can easily maneuver your leg and you can actually change the position of your pelvis a lot more freely. So it's a great option for individuals who struggle with issues during bilateral movements. All right, let's talk about how to do the rear foot of a split squat. Number one, you need something to put your foot on. A bench is a great option. Alternatively, you could use a leg roller. And then another option is to utilize a barbell on a rack. You can have a squat pad or a foam roller on the bar to make it a little bit more comfortable. Once you have your leg pad in place, the next thing we gotta do is figure out your walkout distance. To do that, we're gonna set up in place, we're gonna walk out a distance, and then start to adjust based upon your needs. The first thing you need to consider is are you trying to work more quad or more butt? So when you're in place, if you're trying to emphasize your quad more, you're gonna be trying to get that more forward knee travel. So that usually means you're gonna have a closer in position versus having it further out. In contrast, if you're trying to work that butt more, we're gonna have that foot further out, that way you can get into more hip flexion. Another consideration with this is gonna be the hip extension range of motion you have. So when I set up and I'm here, as I go down, my hip has to extend. And if I don't have a lot of hip extension, particularly with my knee bent, I'm gonna have a hard time being here, especially going further out. So that's where if you don't have a lot of hip extension, being a little bit closer in is usually better. On the flip side, if you don't have a lot of ankle range of motion, particularly for dorsiflexion, you're gonna find that closer in position really challenging. And you'll have to find that you have to take your foot further out in order to be in a comfortable position. Once you find that position that's optimal for you, generally what you can use is some sort of marker on the ground. So I take a band, What's up, Bruce? I place it on the ground. I know that's where I like to put my toe. I go out and then I go down. I consistently have a similar stance each time. Once you have your pad in place, you know your distance, the next thing you wanna consider is utilizing some sort of pad. The reason for that is that as you go into each of your reps, it'll give you feedback that you're actually going a consistent depth. It's common for individuals to not go the whole way down. And so then having something to give you feedback on that is really beneficial. Now, one of the next things to consider is, are you gonna have your toes flipped back or have your toes down? Generally, I'm gonna recommend most people to go with the foot flipped like this. You'll find that when you have your toes digging down, you're gonna end up pushing with this rear leg more. You also have more challenge with toe extension. You're gonna have more demand on knee flexion and also a more of a challenge on hip extension. Some things that a lot of individuals really struggle with. So this is really hard to get the whole way down. In contrast, you can get down a lot easier, 
focus on utilizing this front leg to a higher degree, and it's just gonna be an overall better position. Next thing to do is once you got all of this laid out, start squatting. Up, down, and get crushing in. All right, we're gonna discuss the common mistakes with the rear foot of a split squat. The first one is having too high of a bench. Individuals will often utilize as a standard bench, which can be good for a wide variety of people. However, if you're a shorter individual, this might be too high, and in contrast, if you're a taller person, might be too low. We're often looking for something that's gonna be around, uh, in line with the top of your tibia, or right at this bone part right here. So if you set up and you find that you're having a really hard time because it feels like your foot is just way too high, that might be a thing to consider changing. You can do that by either elevating your foot or utilizing a lower bench. Mistake number two, being too far out or too far in. You wanna utilize those tips we discussed earlier to find that right distance. If you're way out here, you're gonna have a hard time going down and it's gonna be really irritable on your hip. On the flip side, if you're really close in, you're gonna struggle getting depth and you're gonna probably piss off your rear knee. So you wanna find that distance that's right for you. Mistake number three, making this too challenging on balance. Again, this exercise is a semi-unilateral exercise. We wanna focus on taking advantage of that. So when individuals sit up and they go into this really narrow stance where they have their one foot here and they go in line with it, they're focusing so much on resisting falling that you can't necessarily load this exercise very well. So instead of being in line, what we wanna do is have this leg in line with this hip, other leg in line with this hip. So a little bit wider setup. That way you can effectively go down and really load up your leg. Now, if you're still struggling with balance and your goal with this movement is strength or hypertrophy, then you should consider utilizing something like a dowel. When you set up and you're loading up this exercise, you can be in this position, you can have a dowel for assistance, and you can go through the motion. You can then hold on to a dumbbell on the one side and load it up. If you wanna have the dumbbell on the other side, you can flip it around and have it this way. And that way you don't have to deal with as much balance demands and you can really load up that leg. The next mistake is not going to a full depth. When individuals sit up, it's really common to see people go down and up in this shallow position. If we're trying to utilize this exercise for strength or hypertrophy, we wanna get down through a deeper range to really load up and take advantage of as much as possible, especially considering how stable of an exercise this is. So when you're coming down, you wanna have that pad there for consistent feedback. So I'm gonna set up, try to make contact, come back up. If you notice that you're struggling getting down that far, you can take up multiple pads and work your way down over time. The next mistake is going too light in this. It's really common where individuals can squat a few hundred pounds, and while they're doing it, they take these really light dumbbells. Now, there's no inherent problem if you struggle with the exercise to start there. However, you should be trying to push and use a respectable weight on this. When you're doing this exercise, you want to take it seriously. So if you're someone who can back squat 400 pounds, you should be trying to utilize at least 50% of that load since we're using one leg at a time, essentially. So for an example, I'm a, I can squat around 500 plus pounds. So we got just around 300 plus pounds on here. So I'm gonna take this for a roll. <clears throat> now there are a number of different ways that you can load up the roof of a split squat. So let's run through them. The first way would be taking a single dumbbell and then you set up to where you're in your stance and you have a dumbbell on the same side that's back. This is called an offset load. You could alternatively have an ipsilateral load. So it's on the same side that's working. The load change is gonna work your hip muscles slightly differently. You could also utilize two dumbbells. This will be less balance challenging and you'll have more overall loading ability. You could go back to a single dumbbell or use a kettlebell and you can go to a goblet position. This will increase the amount of trunk challenge and also encourage a bit more quad work. From here, you can ditch the dumbbells and we'll go to some barbell options. Now, barbell options are fantastic because you can increase the overall loading with them versus dumbbell options. So there's a few ways that we can utilize the barbell to set up and load this up. The first one is gonna be a front rack position. So you can do that either with a clean grip style or a cross arm style. A second option is gonna be a back rack like you would for a back squat. Then the last option that I like to utilize is actually a zercher grip. This is where we hold the barbell in the crooks of our elbows. You can utilize a barbell pad for this if you find this uncomfortable on your elbow crease. That's how you do the roof foot of a split squat, the variations of it, ways that you can adjust it depending upon your goals. 
If you can't do the roof rotator of a split squat for various reasons, you can experiment with doing a split squat where you keep your foot on the ground. We've got numerous videos where we discuss it. You can also do two foot leg variations and some other unilateral versions that we'll have coming up in future videos. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button down below. It helps us out a lot. And make sure to subscribe so that you see future videos coming out.